and will not be able to hold a candle to AI. Hmm. You scare the shit out of me when you talk about AI, between you and Sam Harris. Having this device is just a winner-take-all scenario. I mean, you, you win the world if you have this device. You can turn the lights off in China, you know, the moment you have this device. You can just, I mean, it's just the ultimate, because um, literally, you were talking about, and, you know, many people are, may doubt whether such a thing is possible, but, again, we're just talking about the implications of intelligence that can make refinements to itself in over time course that is bears no relationship to what we experience as apes you made me shit my pants I, <laughs> talking about ai I, I realized like oh well this is a genie that once it's out of the bottle you're never getting it back in that's true right so you're talking about a system that can make changes to its own source code um, and become better and better at learning and more and more knowledgeable has instantaneous if we give it access to the internet it has instantaneous access to all human and machine knowledge and uh, it does you know thousands of years of work every every day there was a video that you tweeted about one of those Boston dynamic robots and yeah. you're like in the future it'll be moving so fast you can't see it without a strobe light yeah you could probably do that right now and no one's really uh, paying attention too much other than people like you or people that are really obsessed with technology all these things are happening and these robots are and did you see the one where P PETA uh, put out a statement that you shouldn't kick robots probably not wise <laughs> for retribution their, their memory is very good I bet it's really good. It's really good. I bet it is. Yes. And getting better every day. It's really good. I mean, our intuitions completely falter to, to, to capture just how immensely powerful such a thing would be. And there's no reason to think this isn't possible. I mean, the, only, the, the most skeptical thing you can honestly say about this is that this isn't coming soon. Right? Like, this is not... But to say that this is not possible makes no scientific sense at this point. There's no reason to think that a sufficiently advanced digital computer can't can't instantiate general intelligence of the sort that we have. It feels like we are the biological bootloader for AI, effectively. We are building it. And then we're building progressively greater intelligence, and the percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. And eventually, we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. The intelligence has to be at bottom some form of information processing. And if we get the algorithm right with enough hardware resources, and the, and the limit is definitely not the hardware at this point, it's, it's the, the algorithms, um, there's just no reason to think this can't take off and, and scale, and that we would be in the presence of something that is, that is uh, like having... An, an alternate human civilization in a box that is making thousands of years of progress every day. But the, the AI is informed, strangely, by the human limbic system. It, it is, in large part, our id writ large. How so? We mentioned all those things, the sort of primal drives, mm -hmm. all the things that we like and hate and fear. They're all there on the internet. They're a projection of our limbic system. <laughs> That's true. This can do human-level intellectual work, but just a million times faster. And again, this totally undersells the prospects of superintelligence. I, I think you know, human-level intellectual work is is um, it's going to seem pretty paltry in the end. But if you just Imagine just speeding it up. If you imagine if, if, we, if we were doing this podcast, imagine how smart I would seem if between every sentence, I actually had a year to figure out what I was going to say next, right? And so I say this one sentence, and you say, you ask me a question, and then in my world, I just have a year. I'm going to go spend the next year getting, getting ready for, you know, for Joe, and it's going to be perfect. Ultimately, I can change my my ability to work faster. I mean, like we're talking about software that can change itself. You're talking about something that that becomes you know self-improving. So there's a compounding function there. But the point is, it's unimaginable uh, in terms of how uh, how much change 
uh, this could affect. And you feel like this is decades away or years away from being too late. If you have this fatalistic attitude and you yeah. feel like it's going, we're in a almost like a doomsday countdown. It's not necessarily a doomsday countdown. It's it's a out of control be, countdown. Out of control. Yeah, people call it the singularity, and uh, that's that's probably a good way to think about it. It's, it's a singularity. It's hard to predict, like a black hole. What what happens past the event horizon? Right. It's so once it's implemented, it's very different because it it will once be the able to out of the bottle. What's right. going to happen? And it will be able to improve itself. Right. Yes. That's where it gets spooky, right? The idea that it can do thousands of years of innovation very, very quickly. Yeah. And then we'll be just ridiculous. Ridiculous. We will be like this ridiculous, biological, shitting, pissing thing trying to stop the gods. No, stop. We like, we like living with a finite lifespan and, and watching you know, Norman Rockwell paintings. It could be terrible, and it could be great. It's not clear. Right. But one thing is for sure, we will not control it. Do you think that it's likely that we will merge somehow or another with this sort of technology and it'll augment what we are now? Or do you think it will s replace us? Well, that's the scenario. The, 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 the merge scenario with AI is the one that seems like probably the best. Like for if, us. Yes. Like if you if you can't beat it, join it that's <laughs> yeah you know um from a long-term existential standpoint that's like the purpose of Neuralink is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with ai because we have a bandwidth problem you just can't communicate through your fingers it's too slow What's the idea behind it? Like, what are you trying to accomplish with it? Like, what would you like, best case scenario? I think best case scenario, we effectively merge with AI, uh, where we, AI serves as a tertiary cognition layer, uh, where we've got the limbic system, um, kind of the you know, primitive brain, essentially. You've got the cortex. So you're, you're currently in a symbiotic relationship your, with your cortex and limbic system are in a symbiotic relationship and generally people like their cortex and they like the limbic system i haven't met anyone who wants to delete their limbic system or delete their cortex everybody seems to like both and the cortex is mostly in service to the limbic system the cortex is trying to make the limbic system happy that's what most of that computing power is now if, if we do have a third layer which is the AI extension of yourself that is also symbiotic. Um, and there's enough bandwidth between the cortex and the AI extension of yourself such that the AI doesn't de, de facto separate, then that could be a good outcome. That could be quite a positive outcome for the future. So instead of replacing us, it will radically change our capabilities. Yes, it will, it will enable anyone who wants to have superhuman cognition. Anyone who wants can just do it, in theory. And if that's the case, then, and let's say billions of people do it, then the outcome for humanity will be the sum of, of human will, the sum of billions of people's desire for the future. And but that, that billions could be a... of people with enhanced cognitive ability, how much different are you talking about? When you say radically improved, like what do you mean? You know, it's kind of like how much smarter are you with a phone or computer than without? It's you're vastly smarter, actually. You can answer any question pretty much instantly. Any calculation, your phone can remember videos, pictures, and everything perfectly. Uh, that's the that your phone is already an extension of you. You're already a cyborg. You don't even well, most people don't realize they are already a cyborg. That phone is an extension of yourself. There's a communication rate between you and the cybernetic extension of yourself, that is your phone and computer, is slow. It's very slow. That, it's like a tiny straw of information flow between your biological self and your digital self. And we need to make that tiny straw like a giant river. A huge, high bandwidth interface. It's an interface problem, data rate problem. You solve the data rate problem, I think we can hang on to 
human machines in biosis through the long term. And then people may decide that they want to retain their biological self or not. I think they'll probably choose to retain their bi biological self. You will be essentially snapshotted into a computer at any time. If your biological self dies, you could just probably just upload into a new unit. This is just inevitable. Again, going back to your when you decided to be, have this fatalistic viewpoint. So you warned, you tried to warn people. You talked about this pretty extensively. I've read several interviews mm -hmm. where you talked about this. It, it, for sure, you're you're getting the warning out to some people. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. This seems Nobody like a listened. scene in a movie Nobody where listened. the robots are going to fucking take over and you're freaking me out. No one seemed to realize where this was going. 